Have you ever wondered what would happen if your favorite NFL team ran out of time to draft their the player? The Houston Texans select C.J. Stroud, quarterback, Ohio State. Well, in 2003, the Minnesota Vikings would be the team to find out. Well, <laughs> Danny, the clock is winding down on the Vikings. What's going on? You, you gotta like seven players. There's seven players in all of America because they the Vikings. Passed. ESPN welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. The NFL Draft, a spectacle where futures are forged and destinies are decided. But in 2003, the Minnesota Vikings found themselves facing a unique challenge, one that would test their ability to make split-second decisions under intense pressure. The Minnesota Vikings are now on the clock. The Vikings were coming off a 6-10 season the previous year, but had reasons for optimism following a season-ending three-game winning streak. They were set to pick seventh overall in the upcoming draft, and were looking forward to addressing some key positions. The Vikings, they had weaknesses at a lot of positions, as most 6 and 10 teams do, but they appeared to want to start their focus on the defense. At least that was the speculation as the seventh overall pick approached. They won the last three games of the season. That was big. That's the key thing. They want the cornerback. They want the defensive lineman. As Mel said, can they step back a little bit? The key is Carolina, Jacksonville, Baltimore. Talk to all three. Be careful. The clock is ticking. Make up your mind who has the best deal and either drop back or take the cornerback or defensive end. Unlike today where teams have 10 minutes to draft a player, back then they had 15. The live event was also annually held in New York City at Madison Square Garden or Radio City Music Hall. And the way teams selected their players was by instructing an on-site representative to write the name on a card and deliver it to an NFL official near the stage. A system that unfortunately caused frequent mistakes and, you know, delays. You know it's gotta have the pick. Well, guess what, then? If you want to the last However, the Vikings knew going into the draft who they wanted. That was Kevin Williams, the defensive tackle out of Oklahoma State and they knew they could get him at seven. There's really two players you would think Minnesota would be looking at if they remained here or backed off. It'll be Kevin Williams, the defensive tackle from Oklahoma State, a fast rising player. So they may figure, let's roll back a bit, and we figure we may be able to get one of those two players. That's a gamble, but they may be willing to take it. They were also determined to keep their draft plans a secret this time to minimize their chances of a repeat 2002 situation. But we'll get into that later. Draft day had approached and everyone in the organization knew the plan going into that night. Kevin at seven. However, then owner Red McCombs woke up that day with a change of heart. He would demand they trade down before the draft started, adding a unique level of pressure to the circumstances. But why? What was the reasoning behind this impromptu mandate? Well, it's simple. The Vikings were broke. In 1998, Red McCombs purchased the Vikings for $206 million. But just three years into his tenure, he would start to grow frustrated with the limited amount of local revenue he received from playing home games at the Metrodome, which had limited inventories of the kind of club seats and luxury boxes that drove stadium revenue. And state government officials had made it clear they wouldn't help replace the stadium until after the team's lease expired in 2011. So, in a 2001 interview, McCombs said he had covered revenue shortfalls for two consecutive seasons and wouldn't continue. And when asked whether that decision would impact the future budgets of the team, he would go on to say, I think we're into that mode now. And I think it would be obvious that it would. Signs of the budget cutting were everywhere by 2002, especially when McCombs fired then head coach Dennis Earl Green and replaced him with Mike Tice, who agreed to become the lowest paid coach in the NFL. And the payroll for his assistant coaches would match. To add insult to injury, McCombs decided not to hire a general manager after Green's departure. And before the end of the year, he instructed his banker at JP Morgan and Chase to solicit purchase offers for the franchise. So that was the backdrop for the 2003 draft. Despite being in a good draft position to pick their top prospect, the organization was demanded to trade down by ownership to essentially save money. Minnesota Vikings. Built this team pretty much. It did now with Mike Tice, one of your protégés, is, is ready. They had a nice finish. Do, do, can they put together a few parts here to get back into the, at least a wild card mode, Denny? So, Vikings then VP of football operation Rob Brzezinski would begin to work the phones but found relatively light interest for the number seven spot. Rob spoke with the Jaguars and the New England Patriots, but the Ravens were always the likeliest target, given their presumed interest in drafting a quarterback. The Ravens had their eyes set on Marshall quarterback Byron Leftwich, 
who was considered the second best quarterback in the draft after USC's Carson Palmer. And the Ravens knew in order to get him, they would need to trade up. So the Ravens would ultimately offer a pick swap with a fourth and sixth rounder. That offer was a significant loss based on the trade value chart. And the price for risking the loss of a coveted player like Kevin Williams should have been much higher. But the draft had already begun and the time was running out. So ultimately the Vikings had no choice. They went ahead and reported the deal by phone. With 32 seconds out of their 15 minutes remaining, they got the deal done. All they had to do was sit back and watch the Ravens pick their guy, or so they thought. Within seconds, the Vikings noticed something strange. The team logo on the broadcast hadn't changed. Insert one of, if not the wildest set of events in modern NFL draft history. He's, he is a Mel Jr. Well, <laughs> Danny, the clock is winding down on the Vikings. What's going on you, here? You gotta like seven players. There's seven players in all of America that you can pick. There goes Minnesota Jackson. Vikings have had to have turned one in. Here it is. What? You can't pass. Jackson was on the clock. Who do they take, Mel? Well, I think you're looking they fire. Passed. They passed. Which means they don't lose their pick. They essentially just pass on their draft position allowing the next team to move up and draft in their spot, and so on and so forth until the Vikings, or any team for that matter, eventually turn in their pick. If you look at they Byron and Twitch and Marcus True, Too late. again, same thing we had to let happen last you year. Know what? Yeah, you heard that right. That would be the second year in a row the Vikings would get passed in a draft. But the difference that time was, it would all start with the Dallas Cowboys, whose time expired at number six, and the Vikings' mistake that year was not being quick enough to jump ahead of the Cowboys in line. That year, Mike Tice had acknowledged publicly that the Vikings wanted to draft North Carolina defensive lineman Ryan Sims. Interestingly enough, the Kansas City Chiefs also acknowledged that they wanted Sims and were in the middle of completing a trade with the Cowboys to get Sims at number six when the time expired. Upon realizing the Cowboys' time had expired, the Vikings tried to get their car to the stage first, but the Chiefs representative beat them to it. Sixth choice in the 2002 draft, the Dallas Cowboys elected to trade with the Kansas City Chiefs. And Kansas City has selected Ryan Sims, defensive tackle from North Carolina. Instead of Sims, the Vikings ended up drafting Miami left tackle Bryant McKinney instead. After that draft, McCombs reorganized the team's front office, putting Brzezinski and director of college scouting Scott Studwell in charge of the draft moving forward, ahead of vice president of player personnel Frank Gilliam, with Tice maintaining a significant voice. So, in the 2003 draft, the Vikings were determined to keep their draft plans a secret this time. And after Kevin Williams' dominant performance in the Senior Bowl that year, the new and improved Vikings leadership team agreed he would be their top target. But at the end of the day, if you can't get your pick in in time, it doesn't really matter if it's a secret or not. So, what happened? Well, the deal between the Vikings and the Ravens was never consummated. I know. In the NFL, both teams are required to call in and report a trade to the NFL's vice president of player personnel. This way, one team can't pull a fast one on the other, especially in a fast, high-stakes situation. Both teams need to confirm the trade for the trade to go through and be approved by the league. They have to consummate the deal. <sighs> wow, I'm so immature. Okay. The Vikings called in and reported the deal and assumed the Ravens were doing the same. They never did. According to the Ravens, their call went unanswered and the league never executed the trade. Ravens general manager Ozzie Newsom said at the time a deal is not a deal until he talks to Joel. And he never talked to him. Now. There's speculation out there to this day that maybe Aussie didn't actually call in the first place and it may have been an attempt at sabotage, but who knows? But what I do know is that this particular incident was the first and only time anything like this has ever happened in the history of the NFL. Essentially, the Vikings did what they were supposed to do and assumed the Ravens were doing the same. But for whatever reason, whether intentional or not, the Ravens never called their end of the deal into the league. However, the Jaguars were next on the clock, and they were ready to go. Mike Perkins, Jaguars video director, was in New York and began alerting his team when the Vikings draft clock was down to 20 seconds. He urged them to give him a name he could submit if the Vikings time expired. They did, and that name would be the QB the Ravens originally wanted. With the uh, eighth selection in the 2003 NFL draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Byron Leftwich, quarterback from Marshall. You know, oh. I don't, I just, well, right. Moments later, realizing the Vikings still hadn't made their way to the stage, the Carolina Panthers rushed up their pick. 
quarterback. Let, let me tell you what's Trey going Jackson. on here. Minnesota can run up at any time with their pick, but Carolina's going to beat them to the clock. Well, you know, they select an offensive tackle Jordan Gross out of Utah. Next were the Ravens, who were scheduled to make their selection. Instead, Minnesota made his decision, notified league officials, and it was validated. Minnesota Vikings select Kevin Williams, defensive tackle from Oklahoma State. Finally, the Ravens will be next, and with their quarterback left, which already selected, they went with their next top prospect on their board. Baltimore Ravens select Terrell Suggs, defensive end from Arizona In State. hindsight, Minnesota's 2003 NFL draft blunder worked out well for both the Vikings and the Ravens. Kevin Williams played 11 seasons in Minnesota, made the all-rookie team in 2003, was selected all-pro six times, and made it into the Vikings' ring of honor. And for Baltimore? Terrell Suggs exploded onto the scene his rookie season registering 12 sacks, four fumble recoveries, and an interception. He played 16 seasons in Baltimore, was the NFL's Defensive Player of the Year in 2011 and 2012, made seven Pro Bowl appearances, and was an integral part of a stingy Baltimore defense that helped win the Super Bowl in 2013. Leftwich made the all-rookie team his first season in Jacksonville where he played five seasons. He played for four different teams in his final five seasons before retiring in 2012. He went on to become a coach in the league and ended up winning a Super Bowl with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Jordan Gross played his entire 11-year career with the Panthers, earning All-Pro honors in 2008 and making three Pro Bowl appearances. He went ahead and retired in 2013. And ultimately, owner Red McCombs got what he won. His top prospect, Kevin Williams, at a lower pick and a cheaper price.